welcome back, and thanks for joining me again as I continue to paint through Guards of Atlantis. I'll be painting Brogan in a similar fashion to my previous videos, but I'm picking up my speed a bit. My goal was to have him basically done in one quote-unquote painting session, maybe giving myself a bit of leniency with speed paint drying times, but with a goal of not spending more than two or three hours to take him from primed to painted. So let's launch into it and see how I do. Brogan's model is a chonky boy, which unfortunately means he has some mold lines to clean up. I recommend scraping or filing off the ones on the left edge of the cloak, the top of the shield rim, the top of the crow, and on the axe. The one running down the middle of the leg would also be good to get. I don't do a perfect job with this, but it doesn't have to be perfect to look better. I also scraped the line off of the right edge of the cloak. This is quite a few mold lines, but of course you can ignore them if you just want to get right to painting. I still did my classic gray prime and dry brush for pre-shading, but this time, just for the fun of trying it out, I dry brushed him with an off-white instead of with a pure white, hoping that this will look good with all of the browns and warm tones I'll be applying to most of the model. I'm not deviating much from my normal workflow otherwise, and I start with filling in all of the brown surfaces with speed paints. I'm being really fast with this, there are lots of different little bits and pieces on his armor and clothing, so I just pick a dark brown and a lighter golden brown, and vary the colors between the two. Important note, I only paint the inside of the shield the natural wood color. You can see in this card art that the outside of the shield actually has a painted checker pattern, which I'll be replicating. Speaking of, for now I just paint the whole front of the shield with a yellow speed paint, and we'll add the orange parts later. Then I just go around blocking in a few more warm colors, mixing in some aged hide into the yellow for a hair color, and painting the base. I waited a few minutes and everything looked pretty much dry, so then I mixed up a light brown color and dry brushed it over all the brown surfaces. I used a pale yellow to dry brush over all of the lighter elements, like the pants, the hair, the shield front, and the base. This is why I wanted to only paint all of the warm colors first, that way I can be messy with my dry brushing, and will be able to easily cover up any spillover I have onto surfaces that are more neutral or cool in tone later. Next I moved on to painting the cape. The art in the cards mostly depicts it as an orangey red, and I'll be leaning it a bit more towards the red side. I first painted the cloak with a thin layer of an orangey red, applying it as smoothly as I could and pulling the paint away from the raised edges. That took a while to dry, but once it did I came back with the pure red color, thinned it down with water, and painted it over the cape, avoiding the raised areas. The line between the red and the previous layer looked a bit too sharp, so I used a second brush, dampened with water, and rubbed it along the hard edge to feather it out a little bit. I did the same thing another couple of times, mixing in a dark bluish gray color and restricting my shadows more and more to the deepest recesses. As a side note, around here is where I stopped my first painting session, and at this point I'd spent around an hour and 15 minutes on the mini, which is not a bad speed so far. This process did chew up a good bit of time though, and definitely wasn't efficient for the result I got. In retrospect, I would rather just paint a red mid-tone, wash the cape, and then highlight it several times or just use a speed paint and do a couple of highlights or shades from there. But to finish it off, I dry brushed the cape with an orange color and moved on. In the midst of painting the cape, while waiting for the paint to dry, I applied a first coat of speed paint to his skin, not doing anything fancy yet. At this point, I also decided the orange hair looked a little too close in color to the skin, so I thinned down some aged hide and used that all over the hair as well. Don't be afraid to repaint areas that have already been painted with speed paints if the color doesn't look quite right. With speed paints, or with any other contrast type paint for that matter, it's hard to judge exactly what the color will actually look like on the model, and sometimes that means adjusting or recalibrating your colors a bit after the fact. This is also why I often thin my speed paint mixes down with a bit of medium, since it's much easier to deepen the shadows with another coat of speed paint than it is to try and lighten up a color that you got too dark. Then I take a smaller brush, but still not a brush I really care about since speed paint has a tendency to mess up nice expensive brushes, 
and I carefully apply a bright red onto the two quarters of the shield. I try not to load too much speed paint onto my brush. If you do, you might find the speed paint will run into all of the sculpted wood grain crevices and bleed into the yellow checker quarters that you want to keep yellow. I try to paint the lines as straight and as even as I can, but it's okay to be a bit messy or wobbly with the line. After all, Brogan probably painted his own shield, and for all we know, he could be an artist barbarian, but my mental picture of him is that he probably doesn't particularly care about how neat the paint line on his shield is. Now back to the skin. I mix a tiny bit of dark pink color into my flesh speed paint, and apply it as a second layer to the skin just to reinforce the colors a bit more. At this point, the skin still looks a little bit gray in the shadows, but it's good enough, and the pace I want to meet demands that I move on. Now we can move on to blocking in the more neutral or cool colors like the blacks and grays and blues and such. I roughly wet blended together ash and stone and a mix of ash and stone and Tyrian navy, Tyrian, Tyrian, Tyrian navy, onto the large fur, and then did the same, but with a smaller brush for better control, on the boot furs. I want a nice dark blue in the shadows around the bottom border of the fur shawl thing, but I try to be careful to use mostly the lighter color around the shoulders. I've mentioned this before in other videos, but with speed paints, blending paints together feels pretty easy. Just sort of mush your brush around the transition a bit and they blend very nicely. Just keep in mind that the dark color usually overtakes the lighter color a bit in this transition area. Then moving on to the raven, I take this Tyrian navy and apply it really roughly to the head and the top of the crow, and then take undiluted grim black and apply that everywhere else, making sure to do this before the navy color has started to dry. Now onto the metals, I mix some grim black into the ashen stone on my palette to get a nice dark gray color. Then I apply this to all of the things I want to paint metal, specifically the axe, the rim of the shield and the shield boss, and whatever the weird circular bits and decorations are. Note that I'll be painting metal edges on more things, but there's no need to carefully apply speed paints to all of these. It'd just end up taking a lot of time and turning the brown leather armor into a gray color instead. Then I mix up a fairly light metal color, just pick whatever color or mix you prefer, and I paint that onto the edges of the armor, which luckily stand out prominently from the surfaces so they're easy to catch. At this point I also paint the studs, the axe, the gauntlets, the shield, and any other parts I want to be metal. When I do this, I try to make sure that I don't have too much paint loaded on my brush, so I'm actually doing a bit of a super heavy dry brush or overbrush type technique. And this leaves the shadows nice and dark with that dark gray, and gives the impression that we've done more shading on the armor than we actually have. Then, to add some more pop and definition to the model in general, I take a brown wash and I apply it to all of the leathers, the metals, and the base, being a bit heavy handed, but trying not to let it pool too, too much. I use Pro Curls brown wash, but you can use Agrax Earthshade or any other brown wash that you have. A black wash would also be just fine. After waiting for all that to dry, I painted the base rim black, and at this point I think I spent around 3 hours on the mini, and that's including some of the drying time. So mission accomplished, I think that was a great pace for me. I definitely got it done much more quickly than when I painted any of my previous guards heroes. I'm not in any rush though, so I decided to just give a little bit more love and attention to some small details. I mess around first with the areas of skin, just taking a lighter and darker skin color and doing some thin highlight layers, as well as some shadow layers to turn the grayish skin shadows into a warmer, more natural looking color. Nothing fancy or exactly procedural, I just mess around with it a bit and go back and forth however I feel like doing. In my opinion, it's always helpful to practice painting skin tones, and the more you experiment, the more comfortable you'll be with it going forward. I think Caucasian skin tones are also an area where the slap chop painting method fails a bit, so it's useful to know how to remedy this if you want to. Then I decided I want to revamp the shield paint slightly. I add a thin layer of a more rich yellow color to the yellow squares, and then I dry brush the whole shield with a light yellow and shade the whole thing with a brown wash. I quickly dry brush the furs and raven with a cold light gray color. And then the only other thing I do is a tiny bit of cleanup work 
covering up where I got metallic paint on the wood part of the shield, and covering up the spots in the base where I got a bit of red paint. I just color match a rough substitute for these areas, it doesn't have to be perfect. And here's the result I ended up with. Even with the extra steps, I think I spent under 4 hours on him total, and with no airbrush to expedite the process, I'm really pleased with the time to result ratio. As always, let me know if you have any questions, or if there's anything you would like me to cover as I tackle painting Wasp next. Take care of yourself, and have a great day.